Most of you will probably reach for a twist drill when you go to drill holes in sheet metal because that's what you've got the most of. And uh, in a smaller shop, that might be uh, the only thing you've got as far as drilling. And the, to me, the smaller drill bit sizes work just fine. But when you get into the bigger ones, they tend to grab and pull the work up and sometimes give you an irregularly shaped hole. Be very careful about trying to hold small pieces in your hands when you're using bigger bits because this is going to spin around like a razor blade out of your hands and lacerate your fingers. So, and I'm talking about a little bit thicker, this is almost like foil. So be very careful, clamp it down, but if you're drilling in the side of something like a truck bed, you know, or a car body or something like that that isn't going to move, it's not so dangerous because you'll be using a portable drill. But be careful, uh, the small sizes again are going to going to work just fine. Here I am with a quarter inch bit and uh, about a medium speed, 600 RPM I believe it is. And this is going to drill just fine in this uh, aluminum. Now make sure you got a wooden block underneath. Do not drill into the drill press table or even through this hole here. You need something to back it up. And you will almost always get a bit of a burr when you drill uh, sheet metal. And that's just a quarter inch. That works just fine up to that size. I am very leery about the larger sizes, but if you got something that you can really hang on to, you can give it a try, but be cautious. For thin materials, I have found this step uh, type of drill bit, I think it's called a unibit, to be almost a miracle drill. At first I thought they were a a fad or a gadget, but I've, I really like them and they are self-starting. Sometimes I call them a Christmas tree drill. Maybe I heard that some other place, but they really work swell. And this one goes up again to about uh, 7 8 diameter. And they do not grab. They can be used in portable uh, drills as well. Your battery operated drill. And you're kind of drilling one step at a time. And the, the drill is supported within the hole, where that's not true with a two-fluted drill bit. When using this, it doesn't work so well to, to have a, a wooden block, so I'm going to drill right through the hole. Make sure you line that up. You don't damage the drill press table. Now watch this. Any size you want. soft aluminum tends to get pushed down into that hole. You know, you might just want that size, but if you want larger, go to the next step. Or the next step. Or the next step. This aluminum leaves a tremendous burr. And you're not going to find that so much on other materials. You see, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't grab like a twist grip. And there we are, about up to uh, three-quarter already. I think of these almost like a, like a miracle, and that can be filed off. Or come in from the back side and take the burr off with the next size step. And you've deburred it, see? Pretty neat, huh? I would say you need to avoid the use of uh, this type of uh, uh, drill. It uses a tool bit in there. These work okay for wood, but for sheet metal or thin stock, you really need to have the work uh, clamped down, or this will just wobble all around, throw the work, scare the heck out of you. And don't use them in a portable drill either. I think these are okay for woodworking, but I really don't like them at all, actually. For two cents, I'd throw this away. Don't send me two cents. And here's another one. Absolutely do not use this, especially if you're faint of heart. Hole saws are a possibility for sheet metal, and I keep on hand quite a large assortment of them many different brands, but the Sterrett brand being my favorite. 
Now it is best to clamp your work when using these. However, if you're using a portable drill and it's on a, a piece of stationary sheet metal like part of a furnace or something or a truck, uh, you don't need to worry about it. But if you're holding these in a great big electric drill like a half inch electric drill that has a lot of power, be careful it doesn't twist and break break your wrists or, or knock you down. I've been knocked off the workbench trying to use uh, big bits with big powerful electric drills. You know these can be used for wood or metal but you will notice that uh, the larger the diameter the slower it has to run and when you get into a big four incher like this it literally needs to run at 50 RPM and hardly any drill press runs that slow so that's why when you see these used it looks like a a veterans hospital you know with the with all the damaged uh, uh, teeth and and, da and bent uh, uh, hole saws that have been abused and people attempting to use them beyond what uh, they are meant for so be careful they got to run slow and again you need a piece of wood or something to back them up so you don't drill into the drill press table. I think that they're much safer to use with a drill press than with a uh, hand drill. But this is a way of, of producing large holes in sheet metal. I have here a one and three quarter inch diameter uh, Sterrett hole saw and I've got the work clamped here. Again that's aluminum. That's pretty much what I've been using for all of these uh, uh, demonstrations here. But I've got it clamped so that it can't get away on me with the wood under it. Now in some cases you, may, you might want to drill halfway from one side and flip the work over and finish it from the other side. It reduces the burr. You can use a cutting fluid if you want on this. But this is going to cut real easy. But uh, on this drill press the very slowest speed is 600 RPM. Now that's not all that fast until you uh, do the math and, and uh, think of this as uh, almost two inches in diameter the uh, cutting speed is very fast now this is aluminum so that's still going to be within uh, the, uh, the realm of uh, possibility here there's a little bit of aluminum cutting fluid and let's give her a try now of course the pilot there it's a quarter inch pilot that has to pierce through first I like to back it off to clear the chips especially on thicker metal or thick wood. And you can see that we're really turning fast there. And it stalled, it stalled the drill there momentarily. I think I'm going to put a little more fluid in there. And there it went through. And it's always a little bit of a pain in the neck to get the slug out of there. Remove each one. Don't get a whole bunch of them stacked in there. Use a scratch all or, or a, a little screwdriver or something. You can poke that slug out of there. And there you have it. A nice clean hole. That's what the slug looks like. Not too much of a burr even. My grandson Andrew is down here. You might hear him in the background uh, watching me run the video. Need a little bit of a filing there to get that off, but that worked real well. Should you need to make a very large hole that's even quite a bit bigger than my biggest uh, a hole saw, and this is about uh, four and a quarter, it is four and a quarter, the way to do that is to uh, drill a smaller hole in there, an entrance hole if you will, and use your craftsman. However, you need a very fine tooth blade such as this uh, 24 tooth per inch uh, bimetal metal cutting blade uh, a, a 32 tooth would be even better the more teeth you have in contact with the, uh, the work the better it is unless it's going to chatter or grab so your saber saw would work just fine also your band saw but with a band saw you're going to have to make an entry cut or drill a hole and uh, run the uh, the blade through the hole and then weld the blade and we know that we don't want to do that. 
you can cut square or rectangular holes. I'm getting a little more modern now. I'm uh, actually into the 60s or 70s now. I'm no longer at 1870. Uh, using uh, your Dremel, actually it's a Ryobi, with a little abrasive uh, disc. And those come in a lot of different sizes depending on the size of your work. And uh, you've all seen this. Actually, actually, this is a muffler tool, air operated. And there's all kinds of nice pneumatic tools that you will find that can hold these abrasive discs. So let's give that a try. But generally, you got to cut. I got layout lines here, but you might have to cut just a little bit past the end of it in order to get the piece to drop out. Be sure and wear a full face shield or goggles when you use uh, any of these little abrasive discs because uh, this is a reinforced wheel so there's not so much chance of, uh, of this uh, coming apart but those other little wheels that I had here a moment ago are very brittle and come into pieces. There's the first cut. Now I'll make this cut and I'll rotate it and do those. And that worked quite well and took about two minutes didn't chew up the wheel too badly either. Now that might take just a little bit of uh, touch up with a file and as I told you I had to go a little bit past the end there. So if that's objectionable this method wouldn't work but not much of a burr. It does not however produce as clean a hole as what I did here before with the, the, the square chassis punch. And I forgot to mention that uh, the chassis punches were originally used to punch those large holes in a radio chassis so you could install the socket for the electron tubes, the radio tubes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, does it. There are probably many, many other ways of uh, cutting holes in a thin stock than what I showed you, but that's a good representative uh, sample of them. Hope you enjoyed this video and be sure and watch my uh, many others and subscribe to my channel. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.